All right, what's happening, folks? This is going to be a cool video. I reunited with a bunch of uh, old Ranger buddies from back in the day, and we're just telling stories and hanging out. The audio video quality is not exceptional, but the content is pretty darn fun. Anyway, guys, I wanted to go ahead and give a quick shout out to a channel sponsor, the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you want to work in the world of firearms and such, whether it's gunsmithing or you'd like to get something more robust like an associates in firearms technology, they can hook you up and set you up. So sdi.edu, I'll have a link down below for you. But without further ado, let's go uh, hang out with some old crusty rangers. Here we go. All right, we're rolling. All right, what's happening, folks? Got a treat. Ran into some old Ranger buddies uh, from Second Bat back, back in the day. This is Aaron and Nate. Yep, Nate. Very good. So uh, pretty special. I haven't seen you in how long? 13 years. 13 yep. years. But we served not just in Second Bat together. We are the same squad. So we were deploying, kicking in doors, <laughs> falling on our faces, <laughs> being so high speed. Man, we're deadly. Driving cars at night. Driving cars under night under Nas, but chewing gum and walking. barely chewing gum and walking. Hard to do it both at the same time. All easiest strong job. Rangers. The easiest all strong job we've ever had, yeah. right? As you once said, literally the easiest job ever. You have one set of instructions. Just be good at everything. That was my instructions to you, yeah. right? Just be good at everything. That's all you need to do. When it would add, uh, yeah, folks that were in <laughs> my team or squad, and yeah, I'd be like, guys, it's very simple. All you have to do is be good at everything. Don't suck. <laughs> and just if you do that, you'll make it great in uh, our squad. That's it. Just, I demand perfection at all times and all things. What is the big deal? What What are some fun stories uh, that y'all remember? Well, as we as we kind of, you know, touch base on it, I, I remember Jeff in our squad, you know, the tall, tallest tallest member of the squad at the time, coming in coming in hot towards the end of his uh, end of his time and, and how do you say it? Hitting, hitting the hitting the drop zone like a lawn dart. Yeah. They don't know what that means. What happened? So someone came up underneath Jeff's parachute and stole his air. So his chute collapsed, and he bounced off the top of their chute, and then his chute didn't have enough time to open again. He was about 100 meters off the ground or so when it happened. So he came in. I'm really bad at physics, but you know, 9.8 meters per second squared from 100 meters up, really fast. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> Jeff was very fast. <laughs> so he does what all good rangers do, gets his red chem light out, snaps it, throws it on the ground, which lets everyone know, hey, there's an injury here, someone come help me. And the first person to him was an officer who promptly said, are you okay? And he said, sir, does it look like I'm okay? <laughs> Jeff's, the bottom of Jeff's foot was pointing up back at his face. His leg was so mangled. Oh, but I, I was, he was, he was my dude. So I took good <laughs> care of him. I took really good care of him. Do y'all, were y'all in on that? I was not, I was not one of, I was there, but I was not one of the dancers. Another story that comes to mind is during squad eval. I got, had, I got to that? tell them how we took okay. care of Jeff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I was a good team leader. I wanted to, um, I, I took care of him. I drew, I took two privates, like, uh, whatever's, uh, and we encouraged them to dress up like strippers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we brought him to his, his gurney. <laughs> He's got like an external fixator yeah. screwed into his butt. He was jacked up, but we cheered yes. him up, and they did a, a dance for him. And uh, yeah, anyway, we cheered him up. Right? He used to be a world-class runner, ran one of the miles in just over four minutes. Yeah, four minutes. Dude was quick. Yeah. What, uh, what was the story? Uh, during the squad evals with the bees inside of the uniform. Which, Does anybody remember that? Yes, I absolutely remember that. Yeah. What a good ranger because he's he good. lit up and he didn't say yeah, anything. He's, he's standing in a position of attention and he, he gets done with being evaluated and then he starts tearing his uniform off, correct him wrong. Yeah, no. And we're like, what the hell's going on here? And he had bees biting him the entire time, but he stood at the position of attention. That's a strong evaluated. ranger. Yeah. Just let the so, swarm. Yeah. <laughs> Toughest guy I know. Absolutely. What are some what are some others? Oh, um, I think about I think about the times times overseas where you share you know your, your bits of wisdom you know uh, uh, such things like oh shoot I didn't know you guys oh, were doing hey, it. Hey, hey, wow hey. I didn't mean to interrupt guys, you yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. good to see you guys Shane Coley uh, captain of Team Block yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I've been teaching him how to shoot lately. Just, I know, I had to learn a lot of lessons growing up. And, you know, he's been my lead instructor, so we've made a lot of progress. I'm really impressive. Yeah. He's awesome. Shane is a miraculous shooter. I'm going to get a tune up from him soon. So uh, we'll look forward to some videos there. He just totally crashed our little ranger party here. But uh, <laughs> Shane Cully. Take care, guys. Cool. Yeah, so as I was saying, one, one of the things he told me was, was pretty simple, but complex. You're like, okay, when we get into our first gunfight, you might hear a loud screaming type noise. He's like, don't worry, that's just me taking a moment to think about what we need to do next. So just return fire and, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get done screaming and, and I'll, I'll be ready to take charge. So. Did, did that happen? I don't remember I the don't screaming remember. type In noise. my head, when I would think back, like, what, what actually went down? And yeah. In my head, I was shirtless, <laughs> abs were beautifully popping out, and I was just shouting freedom while yeah. rocking a song. That, that as very as well could have been the actual representation, but your pre-mission brief definitely included a tactical you yes. got you got to just have the moment, the cathartic <laughs> oh, scream, Absolutely. and then you stack bodies, bro. <laughs> yeah, and you don't tell anybody later. No, 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 no. Here's a, here's a fact. Uh, I'll share something funny. Of, man, no matter how high speed, cool operator you are, I don't care what tier you are. We worked with every, everything we did was yeah. with like unit yeah. guys, you know, yeah. that, uh, we were attached with. But no matter how awesome you get, you rock some night vision, run around an objective. <laughs> You're gonna eat it. You're gonna fall down. It's gonna be ugly. You're gonna be bleeding, and it's your fault because you're an idiot. Yes. So that that's part of the reality of it. But I remember Aaron. Uh, we had just done this really cool clandestine infill. We hijacked the Haji truck. Yep. There was that goat in the back that was trying to mate with forest. Forest. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, and we did that infill. Uh, you know, beat feet out. We were all night vision, zero loom. I think I remember that right. Yeah. And we were rolling up on building one. I was on point, and I remember looking over just in time to see Aaron just disappear. And he just went into this crater, and he was gone. <laughs> and I mean, I already had a number two man, so I, I had my dudes, and I was uh, ready to go in. But I remember as I kicked in door one to uh, start clearing, I remember giggling at your misfortune. So. Well, you know, you got to learn about the yard hole somewhere. It's like obviously there's going to be an eight foot hole, you know, within ten meters of the front door. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Good times. <laughs> what else do you remember? Nothing for this camera. Nothing yeah. for this camera. I know because some of the stories are like, oh, yeah. that's not kid friendly. Yeah. Uh, well, I will probably say the most terrified I've ever been in my life was when you were on the Top Gun and I was driving and we were the uh, tail truck in a resupply caravan and we were going. I remember driving that whole movement without ever taking my foot off the throttle, which was jammed to the floor the entire time trying to keep up. Oh, because we were just, bit, where were we? Were we Iraq? That was, uh, I believe it was Afghanistan, right? Um, were you just going fast? It was fast, it was dark, we were under blackout, and we were doing a we were doing a resupply run back to, I forget, I think it was Salerno, but I'm not entirely And positive. speed was security? And speed was security, it was dark, and it was just you and me in that truck, Two guys in the truck in front of us, two guys in the truck in front of that, and we were going back to pick up more food and water. And they don't do that anymore. I was, I was, it was 60 miles an hour through this treacherous terrain. Yeah. And we were maybe three feet off the rear bumper of the, of the truck in yeah. front of us the entire night. And I was, I've never been so white knuckle terrified. Like to this day, I can't get scared because it's not that bad. I was just thinking about Blaine <laughs> driving in downtown Iraq when he had given up on all rage yeah. and And sometimes he just got more and more angry at people not yielding the interstate. I'm like, you, you see a bunch of angry rangers in a caravan and you're supposed to yield. Yeah. Modus on the top means yield, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but they just. <laughs> fearless they just didn't care they're like no i cut off america i'm like man we're rolling dirty here uh, so and played somewhere he just stopped caring and so when he was ready to merge left he didn't look anymore he just <laughs> all of our rucksacks <laughs> you go yeah. yeah outside pockets gone. that's what I, um Aaron just told a story. This was before. It's kind of like prompted. It was where we played chicken with a knife. Yes. What was that? Um, it was basically you were you were attempting to make me uncomfortable with, with the proximity. I being the shy, reluctant young man that I was, you know, the closer John got to me, the more irritated I became. 
which fueled the game. Yeah. And so I pulled my pocket knife out and I put it out in front of me and I'm like, at this point, John, if you come any closer, I'm not moving the knife. And John completely called my bluff and walked right into my knife, which but I didn't move. <laughs> so I stabbed myself. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So there was that. Don't play knife chicken with Aaron. Even if he's your guy, he will stab you for it. <laughs> That's awesome. Were, uh, were you um, were y'all there for the pack border thing? Where yes, well that was a spooky night. Oh yeah. Then, uh, trying to back down backwards. I was driving under yep. night vision on a road slightly more narrow. Maybe I wasn't on that one. I might have been. Okay. okay. I, I certainly yeah. remember that night. Yeah. Man, that and when you talked about white nothing, I'm like, yep. man, we almost died a thousand times backing down that road, and it's just sheer cliff. A never-ending crevasse. Yeah. Yeah. But you were driving, so I wasn't worried. It's when I was driving that I was afraid. Well, when you were I driving, was driving, and I was very worried. <laughs> but I'm worried, because <laughs> Jesus, Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> I couldn't see much. That's On the awesome. uh, resupply during the lunar eclipse, which is yeah. really fun, yeah. Paul did save my life from falling off the cliff. So did he really? Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, that was when we ran out of water and yeah. almost died. Yeah. And we had to stick ourselves with IVs yeah. uh, to stay alive. And one yeah. of so, the uh, times we had to stick ourselves with IVs. <laughs> Let's not say there was one. So, yeah. And the, the, the sucky part about it is when you you're get that dehydrated, man, piercing veins, even with sharp needles, is super hard. So, yeah. I don't know how many times I stuck you. I got you eventually. Yeah, eventually. But, uh, yeah. We're yeah. here now. Good yeah. time. Yeah. And we're at SHOT Show now. Yes. So, uh, but did you die? But did you die? <laughs> yes. Yep. See that. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, yeah. we're at SHOT Show now where you run into old buds and, uh, yep. you know, everybody just meeting up. You guys are on to a venture now, aren't you? Yes. What are y'all yes. doing now? We got the uh, bar. Yes. Polymer. Pretty Logo cool. area yep. on both sides. So you guys would print people's logo and whatever yes. you wanted? Yep. Yep. This, it's a startup, so it's not uh, manufactured yet. This is a 3D printed model. This was our mascot, the sea bass. Yep, sea bass uh, right, right here. there and there. And I should have brought my. I've yep. got mine in a box. <laughs> yeah. If I remember next year, maybe I'll do it. Yep. So it, anyway, it'll be engraved, and then the handle is yep. a snazzy rifle. Yep. And inside, when it's empty, it says reload, which That's is right. super clever. Yep. And it's at the perfect level that you still have about two drinks of coffee left when you read reload. Yes. So it's just enough time to get back to the pot. Yeah, like, man. You like, gotta... Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And also the travel lid snaps right at the top. Any ah, generic, uh, any thirty ounce lid, tumbler 30 travel ounce lid, tumbler. Cool. Yeah. snaps right in there. Well, hey, so. man, support Rangers, of yeah, course, especially because they're my bros. So links below in the description for these guys, and I'll also put their uh, info, like Instagram handles and whatever you decide. Yeah. Uh, cool. Anyway, thanks for doing. Yeah. Yeah, reminiscing. So, yeah. guys, train hard, train smart. We'll see you next time. <laughs> thanks. Are you a defender of freedom? Is your favorite holiday the 4th of July? Is your password for your safe 1776? Do you want to be taken seriously drinking your morning coffee? Hi, my name is Nate Appel. I started my career in 2002 at 2nd Range of Battalion. Since then I've been deploying in various capacities overseas. I've created a drinking mug called the Rifle Mug. 30 ounces of freedom at a time. This idea was born in 2012. I was deployed overseas and I came down into the team room and all of our coffee mug handles were broken off. During development I started asking questions, what does this mug need? Number one, it needs to be extremely durable. I mean, if Marines are using this, right? <laughs> So number one, it's made from polymer, microwave and dishwasher safe. Number two, it needs a large logo area on the front and the back, here and here. This allows you to put any logo that you want, full color image. This version, I've just used Velcro because a lot of our tabs on our uniforms, it's a lot easy to transfer. But you can sublimate print, you can pad print, you can laser engrave. You can put either your SWAT or your NOD on one side, or of course, 
We have a seal version with the trident on the front and a mirror on the back so they can check their hair. Any 30 ounce travel lid, generic, will fit in the top, snaps in. And also to let you know to refill your drink, reload on the inside. Number three, it needs to hold a significant amount of coffee or alcohol. The rifle mug holds 30 ounces. Number four, and most importantly, we need a rifle as a handle. Why? Because this is America. You can hold the handle left-handed, right-handed, or around the mug itself. So, what are we doing with the money? Our latest estimates up to $70,000 for tooling for injection molding manufacturing. So we're gonna use that money to offset some of the cost of that. For $25, less than the cost to fill up your high interest Camaro, you can get this badass coffee mug and fill it with 30 ounces of your premium DFAT coffee. We need your help. Click the link and you'll be the first to get this mug at $25 wholesale price. We need massive support if we're gonna make this product. Share it, put in your details, and if you love America, if you support the Second Amendment, if you drink some sort of liquid, click the button. If you don't help us, the terrorists win. Thank you and God bless America. a rifle mug, y'all. <laughs>